Howdy, my name's Nick Welker. You've just uh, clicked on a Welker Farms video. And today, we are not working on the Big Bud. This is our big tractor, if you guys know. Took the radiator out of it in the previous video, you guys know, so it's not in yet, as you can see. But we are not working on this. In fact, we're not doing any farming today. We're gonna be on the road soon, driving to meet a bunch of potential future farmers of America. In just a couple days, will be the National FFA Convention in Indianapolis, and there's over 60,000 high school students and middle schoolers coming to attend this event. It's a massive event, and a lot of them are gonna be future farmers in America, so it's pretty exciting. So we're gonna go and uh, be a part of the Case Ice booth there, so we're gonna take you guys along. So I'm in here in the shop getting ready for this trip, making sure my Suburban can handle the drive, because I am not flying, I am driving, because my family's coming along this time. So, and today's video is brought to you by Simply Safe. So we'll get into that in a minute, because I want that system here, because we're going to be gone. So let's get to it. And drive. Got up at 4 a.m. this morning. Car's packed, full of kids, watching, playing, keeping them busy. We were on the road for a long ways. We're going all the way to Indianapolis for the National FFA Convention. And um, it's going to be a long drive. We're going to split up in two days. So um, let's get to it. What is it? It's a tractor. It's a big tractor? I didn't think you liked tractors. You like tractors? Yeah. You do? Can I go look inside? Oh yeah? You're gonna go look inside. What do we see? Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. Is that your seat for your big tractor? Yeah. Can you get in that seat? Yeah. Okay, keep trying. <laughs> is this your big tractor seat? Oh, we've got another one. Yes, sweetheart. Come on up. Come on. Look, is this our No, this isn't our tractor, but it could be if you guys buy it for daddy. As you can tell, there's quite a few FFA people here. No, this is quite an amazing event, really. There's a lot of different vendors here, different opportunities. But the excitement in the room is quite high. They're actually, it's actually exciting to see how, how much energy is in the room, let's put it that way. Because they're just ready to start, you know? They want to farm or be part of agriculture or, you know what? Instead of me explaining it, how about I go ask a couple people, what do they think about it? Why are they in FFA? So I'm curious, why are you in FFA? To spread the ag work and show the community what FFA really like does, how it broadens your horizons. And how long have you been in FFA for? Three years. So you've been in FFA for three years, and is it like part of your like? Are you part of agriculture? Like you farm, ranch, or anything? Or is it something that you? I mean, we do live in a small town, but like it's not like we live on farms or anything. Okay. So we have really just got into it just to like, be better at public speaking. Oh really? Okay. Well, I appreciate that. It's it's quite an event here, honestly. If you think yeah. about it, there's like what sixty thousand kids. Is that about right? That sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people here. Well, anyways, thank you for your time. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Why are you in FFA? because uh, I like farming. You like farming. What do you farm? Um, beef cattle. Beef and cattle. Okay. So is it something that you grew up in or you, like you just happened to work for somebody or what's the what's the deal with cattle and beef and whatnot? Yeah, I just grew up around it. And so you want to be in FFA and the reason for FFA? I don't know. You just thought it was something cool to do? No specific <laughs> reason, I guess. Really? Yep. Not to meet anybody? Chicks? Girls? Maybe. Oh, maybe. Well, that's understandable. Anyways, that's his take on why he's in FFA. He wants to meet girls. <laughs> okay, we got an ag teacher here, and uh, what do you teach exactly? Uh, so I teach eighth grade through twelfth grade. Okay. Yeah. How many years have you been doing this for? This is my seventh year. Seventh year. And yeah. then you came from a dairy background? Yes, a uh, family uh, dairy background. My grandpa started his own farm back in '68, but he's been milking ever since he could walk. Been teaching for seven years, so you know, been out of high school for you know, ten years, twelve okay. years. Uh, you know, 
going through high school, I saw that you know the one family dairy is not going to support five, six families. Someone's going to have to get an off-farm job. You know, with most most of the students, they just they want to get some sort of diversity of information and some knowledge to mm -hmm. apply. You know, the modern sustainability and you know better production practices. You know, how can how can they make their family farm better? Yep. So they can keep that farm. What does it mean to you to be an FFA? I think it's to show kids that it's not all about farming to be an FFA. Okay. You don't have to live on a farm to be an FFA. Yep. It's more like, hey, if you don't know anything about farming, come join it, we'll teach you. I would say, um, most importantly, like showing the kids leadership and um, how different, different events can affect your life no matter what. And just like trying to get the, more, the world to know more about agriculture and how much it impacts the world. <laughs> we shut the camera off and then she started going through about, it was it was good stuff. Let's Can we try that again? Would that be okay? Yeah. I'm listening to you and you're like gold right there. Okay, FFA isn't just about livestock and you were yeah. saying about speech and- Yeah, so like um, leadership, like there's many speeches, um, prepared public speaking um, and just stuff like you can take away so like that. confidence, like you're building yeah. a lot of confidence in this. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Life skills. Life, Life skills. skills. Yeah. Memories. Just a little memories. Of, like, yeah. Memories. There thought. you go. Memories. Yeah. Like right now. Right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
talk to them about what they're doing before you just bash them on the internet or something? Good advice. I would say so. Got a gold one of these. Oh, really? That's I, sweet. Yeah, I got it at Farm Sanctuary in Ohio. Beautiful. How's everybody doing? Good. Are we awake? Yeah. Did anybody sleep? Yeah. A little bit? Anybody have Mountain Dew today? No. <laughs> coffee? No. Energy drinks. Yeah, coffee. <laughs> it's okay, I know, I survive on that stuff too. It's good to be here. It's good to be at the last day of the National FFA Convention. Are you guys sad? Yeah. This is it. Any, any last hurrah before the end? You gonna try to take the Black Knight first spin? So we had this crazy idea while we were sitting in line waiting. We're like, we should rock, paper, scissors the Welker boys for their hats. So we came in the first day and they're like, well, it's the first day, we can't get rid of it. So he's like, come back next and bring a $100 bill. So we got our $100 bill, we came back and he couldn't believe it. He was like, uh, yeah, second day. I can come back the third and we'll see what we can do so they can have their hats for the pictures. So we came back and the final deal was $150 for all three hats, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, rock paper, scissors, shoot. Oh! Yes! He got it! So we won the first one, and then we lost the second one, and then after that we just got done. But we got it signed by them, and thanks for giving us their hat. And we're back in Montana. 4,200 miles logged in the car. That's a haul. Four kids under five. It actually wasn't as bad as I thought. Just a lot of driving. But it was a great time there in Indianapolis. Wonderful time. So many good kids. Met a lot of really fun people. And uh, I hope to do it again next year. So we'll see. But it turns out 69,500 FFA students attended that event. That's amazing. So good for you guys. And uh, if you guys don't know about FFA and if you have a school that has it, it's a program worth looking into. It's amazing what they do. So with that said, I want to talk a little about our security system we used in the shop to protect it while we were gone and no one was here. So Simply Safe, what is it? Why do we have it? Simply Safe is an award-winning system with cutting-edge technology and a staff that's highly trained that's ready to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anytime. So let's go into some of the sensors. This is your base station, which is conveniently controlled by your app or a keypad. The app is probably the best. It's armed right now, so when we were gone on our trip, we had it set as away. So basically now, exit now the system will arm. So if anyone opens the door or glass sensor detects a window being broke or water sensor, something's going on, motion detectors in the shop, it'll trigger an alarm and notify us and call authorities while we're gone. So we don't have to worry about what's going on in the shop. Isn't that nice? But I'm here, so we want to disarm the system. So let's make sure we just turn it off. Alarm off. There. Simply Safe right now is offering up to 50% off a new system. I think that's the most I've ever seen. Now say the motion sensor gets triggered by someone walking around in our shop. You can just pull up on your phone here, open the Simply Safe app up, and bam, got the camera hanging up top. And if you want something a little more portable, you've got your wireless 1080p wide angle lens, two way audio communication, night vision, outdoor camera. And fully functional with the app too, as you can see. And for less than a dollar a day, a system that you set up online, have shipped directly to your door, you can install in under 30 minutes you can save up to 50% off by Simply Safe's biggest sale of the year. Just go to simplysafe.com slash Welker Farms and customize yours now. And just remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Let's get to it. Okay, we are, we, I guess myself and me, I guess that's what uh, we stand for, right? I have this uh, transverse 2015 low tire. Got back from the airport from going be out at the FFA convention. The tire was down, but it was enough air to get us home. 
so I got to find out what uh, what's the problem with it. Um, we do end up fixing many tires uh, because we drive on a gravel road. Also, there's the uh, count, uh, the city county landfill that's on part of that road, and uh, we do pick up a few sharp objects. If you get my point. But anyway, we will uh, let, let's just take a look and find out what's wrong. I already got the tire off, as you can see, and uh, we'll wheel on in here. I don't know if I've seen somebody else do it, but they have. But I just took some dishwashing soap in water, start spraying the tire, and when I got up around here, look what I found. I did find a hole. All right, I'm gonna let that deflate. And uh, you've probably seen before how we do tires here. Just like a tire store, we've got a tire dismounter with the bead, bead breaker, the table with the jaws that tighten the rim around. We also have a tire balancer. As you can see, it's very organized, very cleanly. Uh, patching area here where we buff it out. We have our, uh, <laughs> our wheel stand where we can put the arms in, open the tire up, do a lot better job of of uh, getting it prepared to put the vul vul vulcanizing patch on there. I'm gonna mark the valve stem so that I'll know. And I'll put it in the same place. Put a V here for victory when I get the tire fixed. As long as I put that back on that position, it should stay on where it was balanced before, so I don't have to put it on the machine. All right. Okay, let's tighten her down. Yep, she's good. That's still going to pull on it. Uh, like it. Okay, I tell you that wasn't the wheel of fortune. I didn't win anything on that one. We have a nail. I'm gonna run my hand through here. Take another look. You guys look for me. You guys see any more? I'm gonna get that nail out, let's prep it. Where do you wanna be? I wonder if it'd be right there. I did not see it, so it must be the head is already, or non-head. Let's see if I can get it out this way. Nope, it must uh, have a nail head on it. So we'll push it. Let me see, there it is. Okay. There you go. There's the nail. Let's get that uh, well coated. All right, there we go. Got that coated. Just put it right over that. Okay, now, I'm not going to wait any longer and keep you in stitches because I'm stitching this on. So I'm going to force, roll back and back and forth, rolling it uh, toward the outside edge. This one here, I'll roll to the outside edge to kind of roll any air that's inside there and just make sure that there's great contact. I think we've got it. There we go. Hey, pop to a pop. We're getting close, aren't we? Yep, there we go, right on the nose. 
pop that off. What I like to do is take a little spiduta, put it over the valve core, and just check for any bubbles. And that means we've got a good seal and uh, good valve core in it, so we don't have an issue down the road. All right, guys, well, that's it. Got this tire changed. Ready to stick on and ready to go roading. Okay. All right, on to the next project. Well, welcome back, guys. Um, something's fishy going on here. Now, I've been pondering to tell you guys what I'm up to now. Uh, it's in November, and uh, the weather is getting colder. It's not necessarily going to get real cold for the month, but it is to the point of at night getting cold enough to uh, freeze water. So what I have here is my fish pond. And it's time to take the fish out before it gets so thick that it's Antarctica. And so anyway, um, I've got a, a pump running, a gas pump. I'm pulling out the water. I'll get it down almost to the bottom where the fish still have a little bit of water to swim in. I'll take my net right there and then I gotta put my boots on. I gotta wade down in there and start fishing them out. I don't wanna do ice fishing. I'm gonna count them to see how many I have. So let's see here. Cold water. Whoa! Look at that baby. One. Woo! Hands are cold. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. All right, what do we have down there? Oh, my hands are cold. One more. Ten. It's not the limit yet. We'll go ahead and go find some more. I think I'll grab this chair so you guys can be along. You guys can point out whenever you guys uh, see one I miss, I yell it out. And then uh, I'll find it. Or you can point your finger toward it. So anyway, here we go. All right, do you see? Uh, yeah, there's one. Okay, thanks. All right, let's get it. 11. 12. 13. Whoop. Yeah, when you try to run away. 14. Whoop. Now we're trying to run away too. 15. All right, who's counting? You guys keep counting. Okay, that's 20 now, all together. I don't think I got half of them yet. There should be close to between 45 and 55, I think, depending on how many didn't quite make it this season, but I'll, let's, I'll let you take a look at some of them. Okay. Well, I got the fish out of the pond and the number of fish, I don't know who guessed it, but somebody guessed it right out there. Uh, there was 46 big ones you know how they get when you uh, tell a fish story and then there was little ones little babies there was 12 of those so that that uh, come up to about 58 something around that number so whoever guessed it uh, um, I'll send you a special um, of course I've probably told you a gillion times that I'd do that maybe didn't follow through but anyway so we got got the fish in 
I got it in two um, containers so they're not so crowded because that was quite a bit in uh, one container. Uh, that water was about 47, 48 degrees. This water that I'm putting in here from our tap, let me go ahead and turn it off. It's about full enough. I can always add water a little bit later. That's around 55, 56. So there we go, turn that off. So what I did is I took some of the water, fresh water coming out of the hose and I diluted these and they come around all oh, 51, 52 degrees. So I can just let them sit there for a couple hours and then there's not a lot of difference. So then I can go ahead and, uh, oop, somebody's ringing my bell. Oh, it's the winner. Yes, just a minute, let me get this. Okay, I think it's close enough time to uh, let's uh, put the fish from these little tubs into the tank for the rest of the winter. Oop, let me, uh, I was filling that up a little more in uh, water. Let me turn that off. There we go. Got it. Don't want to get it too full. All right, here we go. So let's just start putting the fish in. Okay, we got them in. This is where they're gonna be till probably, if the weather's good the, toward the end of March, uh, I'll go ahead and clean the pond out and put water in it and then get it equalized uh, and then we'll put them in then, or it could be first part of April. So they got a few, uh, few months swimming like this in this tank. I got to clean the filter up and then also uh, put the pump back in here so it'll circulate and provide oxygen and also help clean the water. And then the grandkids can come in and do a little winter fishing, but no ice. And that's nice.